Hello everyone. NobiNFI asked, can you do a video on large scale networks and how to keep them organized? There are many ways to organize networks, but in this video I will just present the main scheme used in OpenTTD Coop cargo games, which works well with huge numbers of trains and multiple people building. OpenTTD Coop uses a two tiered network system with main lines, abbreviated ML, and side lines, abbreviated SL. Let's start with the sidelines. Sidelines serve primary industries such as mines, forests, oil wells, etc., and connect them to the main lines. So, sidelines are like local streets, they don't need to be built super high capacity, don't need line sync, and so on. Build them in whatever way works. Each sideline forms a small subnetwork covering a section of the map and is connected to the main lines via a single sideline hub, or SLH. Next are main lines. Main lines span the entire map and carry trains from the sideline hubs to the main stations and back. This is the longest part of a train's journey, so main lines are kept high capacity and built with priorities and line sync to keep things flowing smoothly. So they are like freeways, or motorways or autobahns. Main stations serve secondary and tertiary industries such as power stations, steel mills, factories, and goods drops in cities. Junctions on the main line are called backbone hubs, or BBH. Backbone hubs are basically larger, more complex sideline hubs. They are almost always built as three-way T-junctions just because four-way backbone hubs are too complex to build and become nearly impossible to expand. It's easier to build two three-way junctions instead. Certain backbone hubs are designated as main station hubs, or MSH. There's not really a huge distinction, just that main station hubs connect to main stations rather than other backbone hubs or sideline hubs. Sometimes certain connections can be left off of main station hubs due to the route secondary trains take. So how are these networks built and planned? OpenTTD Coop games usually begin with a network plan, which often includes a miniature model of the map. The plan outlines where main lines and backbone hubs will be. The sidelines and sideline hubs are usually improvised and added as they're needed. What can we learn from this system of designing networks? Of course, for personal games we don't have to, and probably shouldn't, follow this scheme to a T. However, there are some aspects useful for any networks. The most important aspect is the line hierarchy. Designating certain lines as main lines helps make the network more organized. And importantly, connections between sidelines and mainlines are limited to sideline hubs, which makes maintaining and expanding the mainlines easier. So, for example, in the northernmost part of this map we have some primary industries, including this forest here. Trains pick up wood from this forest and deliver it southwestward towards the main station for the sawmill. So the most obvious way to connect up the station would be to just uh, have the trains directly connect to the main line here, and that would be the most direct route. But if that had happened, there wouldn't have been enough room to expand Backbone Hub 5 and add extra lines to the main line. So what actually happened is that trains will go the wrong direction away from the sawmill just so they can connect to the sideline hub number 5 here. And that way, we keep the main lines and the sideline separated, and it makes expansion easier. This brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.